Hello everybody. Well, yes, it is another unboxing of another vacuum cleaner today. And it's the first shark I've had in uh, quite a while. I've had a, a couple of shark vacuums and one Morphe Richards, which was more or less a shark lift away, but branded Morphe Richards in the UK. This one is branded shark. And it's a Shark Rocket, and it's quite a new model for the UK market. Well, it was when I made the video. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I thought this box that I was opening would be an external box, and inside we'd have some nice packaging with lots of pictures on. But no, because I got this from QVC as their today's special value, I've obviously got a boring box because everything is inside this rather <laughs> dull looking box. So let's have a look what we get with this particular rocket. There are lots of different variations available in the United States but so far in the UK this is the only official version. That's a long crevice tool. So we have a shark branded crevice tool. Seems pretty strong. It's quite a large nozzle that. A large opening. So that's the first thing out of the box. I'll pop that behind me. Second thing to come out is I assume it's sort of like a furniture nozzle. It's quite a large wide nozzle again. You've got litter pickers either side so that's suitable for your upholstery, your stairs curtains, your mattresses. Again, branded shark and branded shark at the front as well. So that's the second of the nozzles. Here we have your main wand. Now, I'm pretty sure this is actually metal. It may, might look plastic, but it, the wand is metal. Obviously it does have some plastic pieces either side, including the wand release in the copper colour. I know you can get it in different colours, this machine, but not in the UK. Here we have the microfiber pad that you fit to the dust away tool. I had this tool with my Morphe Richards lift away cleaner. That is washable, machine washable as far as I know. You only get one, no spares, just one. There's a little leaflet inside there showing you how to fit it to the dust away tool. Anything else? Ah, oh, there we go. Here's the instruction manual. Now, where is the main head or the main cleaning head. Well, let's take out the machine itself. Shark, no loss of suction power it says. And of course this is corded. Oh, we actually do have the EU Energy label. A little bit uh, scrumpled up but uh, let's have a look what it says. Apologise if you can hear that. It's raining, but we are in the UK. Here we go. So here's the energy label fitted to the shark. So it's an A rating for energy. It gets a D rating for dust emission from the exhaust. So that's not too bad. Uh, G, of course, being the worst, A being the best. For carpet cleaning performance, it gets a C. For hard floor cleaning performance, it gets a C and the noise level in decibels is 84 so quite a noisy vacuum cleaner it's 550 watts the suction unit and the power nozzle is 80 watts made in china of course quite a comfortable hand grip it's got a textured rubberized part to hold on to two speeds first speed is for bare floors and area rugs and the second is for your regular carpeting. 
It doesn't actually switch off the brush as far as I know. It uh, makes the brush rotate at slower speed when you're using it on your hard floors. So there, there's the rocket and a very, very long 10 meter cable. That's fantastic. 10 meters is, is a good length. I believe that's the length you get on a Henry vacuum cleaner. So I do know that I'll be able to clean more or less my entire ground floor without having to unplug and it'll certainly go up the stairs and possibly clean part of my upstairs as well. So looks a little bit like a Dyson, that sort of shape, but being corded of course you're not having to wait for it to charge up. It's always going to work while it's plugged in. So I'll look at that in a bit more detail and what else? Just mainly I think, oh what's this? Ah oh, of course. This is in case you want to hang the machine up, you can actually fix it to the wall, this little hook. Comes with screws and raw plugs, oops, which have fallen down, but that's the hook there, you can put that back of a door inside your cupboard, so you can actually hang the complete unit up on this hook. There is another way of storing it, which I will show you. They've even provided a little template so we know how far to space the holes for the drill. So I think that is everything apart from the power head. Oh no! Jumping the gun. There's another cleaning tool. Oh it does angle, that's good. That's a sort of multi-purpose brush. Fairly soft but not, not soft enough for some things. But it's, it's not too bad. It does actually angle down. Again, banded shark. Shark on the front as well. I'm not sure. No, it doesn't. You'd think. Oh, it does. But, hmm, there's no point in that. You can take the brush off, but you can't really use that, I wouldn't have thought, as any sort of nozzle because there's little bits sticking up. I don't think you could use it without. I'll check the instructions. Had that, when I removed it, had that got the litter pickers, you might have been able to use it without the brush, but I don't think it's meant to be used without the brush. So there we go, they're all very big, these cleaning tools. And the last thing to come out is the power head itself, I think that's everything. And get rid of the box. Now that bo box weighs a ton. Is it? Hang on, is there something? Oh no, there's something else. Of course, I forgot. This. I thought the box was rather heavy. Easily missed. This was underneath some of the corrugated cardboard or the. Not corrugated. Whatever this cardboard's called. This stuff. It was under one of those. Here is the dust away tool. And again, it's exactly the same as the one, more or less, I think, that I've had before. It might be slightly different. Obviously, the connection is different. It is designed basically for the rocket. And there's a dust away tool to which we attach the microfiber pad here. You've got the suction channel at the front, two wheels. And it looks like larger debris would be sucked through these channels here into the main suction channel. So that is the dust away tool. So that is everything. Finally, I'll just double check because it is rather heavy this box. But yeah, there we are. That is everything. It's all I expected to get with this particular model. So here is the power head. As I said, it's 80 watts. Got two large wheels at the back, two smaller wheels at the front, there's some access points, need a, a coin or a screwdriver to remove those to take this part off if you need to unclog any hairs that have wrapped round. Fairly stiff-ish bristles and a centre, which is quite important, a centre suction channel so unlike a lot of cleaners that might have the suction channel at one side, 
um, in my experience having it in the centre gives you the best suction across the whole of the nozzle and of course the brushes are shaped in order to sweep all the debris into the main air path of the machine. You've got a little squeegee at the back to prevent it scattering dirt behind. Again, shark are banging on about no loss of suction or power. Well that's certainly true, there is no loss of power as long as you don't have a power cut. Suction won't be lost but you do have to make sure the filters are clean so there's always a little bit of small print with these claims. Again, here's the nozzle release. It does feel quite, quite sturdy. I mean, it's fairly light, but not too light. So that's it. That's everything unboxed. Let's take a closer look at the machine itself. Okay, so I've laid out everything that I've unboxed. So let's just focus now a bit more on the actual cleaner, the handheld unit. You can of course use it like this by attaching, you can attach any of the tools directly to the handle, so ideal for doing your car. A little bit larger than a lot of handheld vacuums, but okay, certainly easier than maybe using an upright with a hose in your car. And it's, it's a fair weight, certainly heavier than a, a Dyson, rechargeable but as I said quite comfortable to hold, obviously the motor is located in this part here. This is your two speed switch on the top. That's for your floors, carpets. Now you have a filter in here and it says clean filter monthly. You might have to do that more often depending how often you use the machine and what sort of dirt you're picking up. So that comes off and there's a little note and it says important loss of suction may occur if filters are not cleaned every month. Rinse and let air dry completely. Also tap loose dirt off filters between washes as needed. So any of you familiar with shark vacuums, this is a very similar filter setup to the Morphe Richards lift away that I had. Basically the first filter is this big foamy sponge block. So unlike those pleated HEPA filters, they are quite easy to clean and then you squeeze them, get as much water out as possible, leave them to air dry and then you're ready to go again. Under the first filter is a secondary filter which seems to be a, a double layered affair. It doesn't come apart, it's actually stitched together. So you've got that layer and that layer there's a little tag on it, put this, put in first, this side up. And that's what you can see underneath into the bin. So that goes in there first, and then the foam spongy filter on top. My experience with Shark products, the filters do dirty fairly quickly, but as I said, they are easy to clean. But that is one of the things you must do with any bagless machine, apart from, of course, the filterless Dysons. But the majority of bagless machines, you do, do require some filter maintenance. Now, there is a filter, an exhaust filter, on the back here. I've had a quick look at the instructions. It doesn't say what you do with that, whether that's washable. In the full demo, I will check that out for you. I expect you can rinse that. It's just a very thin cloth type filter. And obviously behind that panel there would be the motor. So that's where the exhaust air comes from. At the back. Here's the dirt bin. Here's the empty release button, so just press that and typically for a brand new vacuum that's not going to open. It will as you use it, just needed a bit of help that time. There's a, a mesh, metal mesh screen. I don't know if you can quite see that, just inside there, you can see it there upside down. Little mesh screen there. Not sure if that comes off, doesn't seem to. 
doesn't seem to be able to be removed this and I do know I have seen and I've had another shark the first shark navigator had this sort of design at the front and a lot of dirt does get trapped in that piece but anyway there we go there's a max fill line just there and of course at the front I've got the little um, power socket to connect up to the powered extension wand so the wand clicks in this way there we go so a nice firm click I like the click sort of fitting tools far better than a friction fit you do at least have a nice definite click quite stable quite sturdy until you press again it might be a bit stiff to remove oh no that came off really easily let's try again click I was expecting that to be quite stiff it is on my Dyson DC35 it hasn't loosened up yet but that one from the get-go is quite easy to remove and then of course once the wand is attached then you can well you can put any of the nozzles onto the end the dust away tool the power nozzle or any of the smaller nozzles but of course as I showed you you can fit any of the tools directly to here but you can also fit which is a very good thing you can also fit the power nozzle directly to the unit so now I mean it is quite large for a handheld let's move these things out of the way but that would be a very good stair cleaner because you've got of course the suction from the machine and the powered brush bar to give your stairs a real deep clean but it is it's large you know especially if you're used to using a Dyson handheld that you can do this with the Dyson as well this is a lot lot heavier but I have a feeling it will perform better than the Dyson I might do a comparison between this and the DC35 but even without switching this on I'm pretty sure this will pick up better than the Dyson because it's mains powered for one so that's that now you can actually store this machine as I showed you put it on the wall with this hook you get supplied and then the hook goes into the back so you'd, you'd hook it onto the wall like that if you don't want to put holes in your wall and I don't fancy doing that there is a storage hook now let me see I'll pop the wand in first that's that you do need the wand in let's just move all these out of the way so I've got the wand in and if you see at the front of the wand it says storage hook so you can actually hook the suction unit just like that onto the base here you go it's a bit easier for you to see so we've got the weight of the machine fastened on the storage hook at the bottom of the wand you've also got a hook for the cord here and there's also one at the top of the wand so you can wrap around the 10 meter cable all the way so you can just put that in your cupboard so it sort of stores like a very compact upright vacuum on the end of the cord you've also got a little clip here so you can actually once you've wound all the cord around the hooks you can secure it with that little clip so it shouldn't come undone when it's stored away or when you're carrying the machine so you can just carry this up the stairs like this so you know quite quite a handy thing so you've got dual storage facility and just lift it off there is a hook at the top there you go and you can turn the hook down and release all the cable in one go instead of having to unwrap it it's a pretty standard feature that on most uprights but this is classed I believe it is classed as an upright cleaner this is not Sharker marketing this as it can be your main vacuum it's got the power, sharks say, of a full-size vacuum cleaner 
obviously it's not got the sort of capacity of a full-size vacuum. But of course I will be testing this out in my review. So that's the unboxing and the initial first look. I will just quickly switch it on. I do believe it's quite noisy. I'll just have a quick go over this part of carpet. It's not going to produce much dirt in here. I just vacuumed recently last night. But just to give me an idea of the handling and the noise level. And I'll just judge the suction at the end. Right, it's plugged in. I've not tried it. Let's just see what the suction's like first of all. Right, there's a plus and a ne negative. Now it's not quite as noisy as I expected it to be. The negative, it's not very powerful. Now the power being mains, it is far greater than any rechargeable vacuum that I've used. I can't think any rechargeable would be as powerful. I mean, it's only say 550 watts, it's not huge. But I'm quite surprised it's not quite as noisy as I expected. But of course, you do have to factor in the noise of the power nozzle. So we'll just have a look at the power nozzle going. I'll just connect it directly to the hand device. And we'll just have a look at the brushes and just see if we can detect the difference. So on the first setting, the brushes should be going at a slower speed. I don't believe they turn off altogether. They do run slower. That is very slow. Obviously you don't want the brushes rotating at a high speed because they can scatter the dirt on a hard floor, but that's, that's slower than I expected it to be. So that's setting one. Now setting two for carpets, the brushes will rotate at a higher speed. So I'll go on to one and then on to two. You can really hear the motor kicking in when you flick it onto setting two. So there's that. I wonder what that is. Nothing. Okay. So yes, plus point, it really isn't as noisy as I expected it to be. It's not too unpleasant sounding. Let's just connect that onto there. So now I've connected the nozzle, the power nozzle back onto the handle onto the tube and I'll put the rocket itself. There we go. So, ready for its first go. I'll just have a quick going over this area. As I say, it's not a demo, a performance demo yet. I will be putting down some dirt for it to, to pick up and testing it on hard floors as well. Up the stairs, everywhere. This is just an initial reaction. The rocket won't stand up on its own when you've got the suction unit at the top it will fall over so that's a little negative but then I've not seen any machine of this type that will stand up on its own so you do have to hold it pop your foot on the power head okay onto setting two and I'll just whiz over this quick area of carpet here <coughs> First thing I noticed, and you might have seen it, as I initially switched it on, it did pull itself along. It does help drive itself in the forward direction, but when you're pulling back, then it is slightly more effort, but it's still pretty easy. I'll just show, if you look at the head, you might see it kicking. I'm not, I'm not gonna push it, I'm just holding it with one finger. It should start to power itself. <laughs> could just see there just a quick it did actually start to move I move I started moving after of course got a little green light on the top of the power head 
I assume, I'll have to check the instructions, I'll confirm this in the demo, but I assume that would turn red if you get a blockage in the power head. If the brushes are obstructed, I'm sure it switches itself off. But again, I'll confirm all that in the full demo. Now one thing though, that is surprising, there's no swivel action. So I don't know if, I'm, I've seen some Shark Rocket demos on QVC America and etc. and it seemed to have a swivelling action. Perhaps that's a later model, I don't know, because this is the first model we have in the UK. But it is a traditional back and forth motion. There is no twisting of the wrist in order. It's absolutely, no, it doesn't, it doesn't rotate at all. That is, that's surprising. I really thought it would rotate, but it doesn't. It's fixed. But as I said, this is the UK version. Perhaps in the UK, and perhaps Shark thought the UK didn't want a swivelling action. So that is a negative. It is easy to push, but nowadays I'm quite used to having some sort of swivel action, whether it's on an upright or a handheld. You know, my Dyson DC35, a good swivel action. So this is a bit clunkier to use. But all in all, it seems okay initially, but this is my first impressions. We'll have to wait for the verdict when I've done the full review. There you have it. That's the unboxing and first look at the Shark Rocket vacuum cleaner. Even on that small area, there's some dirt in the canister dog hairs. Considering I, I vacuumed last night with a Miele S7, we've already got that from a, you know, from probably just about two meter square carpet. I didn't go over it all either. Didn't do it for very long. And the container, there's a lot of dust. So it seems it might be quite good performance wise. Of course there's a lot of other factors to take into account apart from performance but I will be looking at every aspect of this vacuum in the full demo that will follow on my channel. So please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.